nature was parental controls. So we look at it as not what's requested, but how our clients actually implementing it and is it being successful for them. And so that's hopefully what we can bring today to help everybody understand what they can do. And probably the biggest thing we look at and gaining clients it's in all different segments. I mean, you have lead generation, then what do you do once you get the lead, then how do you follow up with leads that are in the pipeline, then what happens once they close, past client follow up, all those different segments. So really now focusing on lead response on how do we get a lead into the hand of the right agent at the right time when they're available to work that lead. Um, and it kind of goes from these old systems that say, hey, let's throw everybody in round robin and just give leads to everyone equally. That is not the best way to do it. And you're going to burn a lot of money and a lot of success. Uh, your success rate is going to go way down if you operate that way. Um, Andre, do you mind if I jump right in and kind of start talking? Yeah, no, please do. I'm going, to do I'm going to turn on my, I'm going to show my screen. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and make sure I can tra transfer this over to you so that we're sh it goes to showing your screen and then we'll rock and roll. All right, I just changed it over to you to be the presenter. Okay. One second. And okay. Can everybody see my screen here? Okay. So probably the first thing we want to talk about with um, looking at instant response to leads is who are you giving leads to and how are you distributing leads? So again, this is the screenshot in the FirePoint system, but it gives you an idea of what you can do and how you can manage your business. And so really the biggest thing with distributing a lead is going to be a question of are you being fair to all of your agents or are you giving them an equal number of leads? So what I would say is uh, equal number of leads. Let's say you have two agents. Um, or it's just you and you have one agent working with you. So if you get a referral, that person gets a referral. You get a referral, they get a referral. Why would you ever do that? You want to give the leads to the person that's most likely to convert and when they're actually working to be able to respond to that lead. If you knew John was off today, you would never send that referral to John, you would give it to Sally. So being very on purpose that you're sending it where it's going to have the highest chance of getting converted because response rates are everything. And if somebody says, like, and I have people say all the time, um, you know, I gave it a referral to John, but it didn't cost me anything. Yeah, he didn't close it, but it didn't cost me anything. No, it cost you five, ten, twenty thousand dollars, and you have to view it as the opportunity cost. So you value them what they're worth to you when they close, not what they cost for you to get. And then another piece is, uh, let's say if John is off on Saturday nights, why is he in a lead rotation? So when you're using a system to distribute leads for you, you're setting up automation. You have to make sure that system can work with the schedules and what you actually need out of your business. So if John's not working Saturday nights, you don't put John in a rotation that affects Saturday nights, or you put him in a rotation that just doesn't have Saturday nights. And so kind of looking inside the FirePoint system, when we look at the idea of distributing leads, we're saying, hey, this lead distribution rule, I'm going to say this is for John, um, is for whatever lead sources John is good with working. Some people are good with buyers. Some are good with sellers. So also, if you're being easy with your agent, if you're not being tough on them, and just because somebody's not good with sellers doesn't mean you give them sellers because you're trying to be fair. Now, if somebody converts sellers better, because a buyer's agent and a seller's agent are usually two different personality types. Buyer's agent yeah. is usually uh, warm and meeting that person. The seller is the, the really friendly, but they're a trained killer because they're competing in a different way usually than a buyer agent is. So what lead sources, what types of leads? And then you're saying, um, okay, what days, what times? I mean, John is not working on Thursdays and Fridays, so I'm not going to put him in the rotation Thursdays and Fridays. He doesn't even need to get those leads because the chance are he's not going to be able to respond. And if you take a lead and you let it sit with somebody for two hours, you basically just gave up the chance of that lead converting because, I mean, granted, it still could convert, but when somebody's inquiring on properties on Zillow or if they're calling signs, do you really think your property was the only one they clicked on or your sign was the only brochure they called, they're going to be doing those activities through other people. They're going to go into multiple open houses. And so you have to make sure that you get response to them right away and build that relationship and lock it down so they don't keep going somewhere else. And so um, is it certain days, certain times, even certain price ranges? If you have an agent that is really good with your luxury properties, so if a lead comes in over a million dollars, it goes to a certain agent. That's something you have to consider. It's all about lead conversion, how much money you make to then grow and stabilize your business, not just giving people something that makes them feel good and cost you money. And then also locations. So if you said, uh, hey, I want this to be um, anything in Highlands Ranch and Castle Rock or Newcastle and anything under a million dollars, and it's not going to be on Wednesdays and Thursdays, whatever that is, okay, then it's going to distribute between different people with different rotations. So this is just being very on purpose with 
who am I sending leads to based on sources, time of day, prices, and location, so that you have a lead distribution strategy that works to get the response right away and the highest conversion rate. The next piece with that is what are you doing right away? So we have a thing called rip away that we might say uh, five minutes that will give uh, the first person that gets it the chance to have five minutes to respond to that lead and then it's gonna rip it away and send it to the next person. So they still have it for five minutes. Um, some people like to do the idea of like first blood where they all get it at the same time. The problem we saw with that is cell phone carriers. I mean, just the idea of cell phone carriers, some will always get those leads 30 seconds or a minute faster and no leads will get distributed to the rest of the team. And so if you want some idea of fairness there, the idea of using a rip away saying, look, this will go to you, you'll get first shot, you have two minutes to go to the next person and it keeps going. And so yeah, uh, this user Dawn will get 44% of the first shots, but she may get none of the leads if she's not there because she's in a meeting and she doesn't accept that lead, she won't get a chance at it. And if anybody ever accepts the lead but doesn't contact them, that's something we'll go into a little bit later about how to audit and go through and make sure people are doing this correctly. So make sure leads are moved around when people are not working those leads. Because somebody that goes into someone on Sunday and their phone's in the car, that needs to be moved to somebody else that will work it right now, will accept, and will call that lead and contact them. So distribution, how's it getting the right person, how's it getting moved, away, moved around, and then do you want to send them a, a message right away? So the idea of like an instant text going out, some people say do it instantly. We usually say like doing it after a delay, like do it after three minutes or five minutes or four and a half minutes. And you can send them different messages based on what lead source. So if you had, if this was a realtor.com, let's say all that was here was realtor.com, and again, just picking on different lead sources, then you could say, hey, this is going to be the response for realtor.com. Realtor.com lead comes in, as soon as somebody accepts it, send them a text three minutes later saying, hey, um, whatever template you want to use, but you're getting an instant response to them no matter what the agents are doing. They accept it, they're getting a text, they're making a phone call, and the process is happening. Um, so really, that's the biggest thing that we've seen that makes a huge difference in agents' businesses right away. And there's things that go with scripting and long-term follow will go into all of that. But the biggest thing right away is make sure that lead gets the right person on the right day and the right time who's working in the right area, the right price points. Again, however your business works. Most systems, though, kind of handicap you and say, oh, we can round robin distribute it, or they can all go to one person. That's not how most people actually want to work. It's how they're forced to work because of the system that they're using. I like that, uh, yeah. And then kind of with that, like just on that one point of instant response, um, Andre, so with my outdesk, what, how do different one, different clients of yours use VAs kind of to fulfill that, to get the instant response to leads when they're coming in? Yeah, well, um, one, of the, one of the main ways that it's used is first off is that it takes the pressure off the agent having to be available at all times, right? Um, depending on whether you're a solo agent or whether you have a, you know, even a smaller team of two to three agents, um, depending on how, depending on your lead volume, right, and depending on the, what kind of advertising or marketing campaigns you have going and happening, um, you know, sometimes the the influx of inbound leads can go up and down. But when it goes up, you still want your response time to be super fast. So one of the things that happens is that what the we see our clients using is virtual assistants to be the first the first step in answering a, an inbound phone call, right? Or following up with a lead. And then the, what happens is that conversation helps to kind of first off filter or qualify the prospect or the lead based upon, you know, whether, you know, what their intent is, what they're, what, whether they're a buyer or a seller, whether, they, you know, what their, what their anticipated timeline is for buying or selling. And then the virtual assistant is able to set an appointment with the best fit agent. That's one of the ways to yeah. do it. So what I like about what your guys' system does is it does it in an automated way where you can just automate a lot of that process. If you're going to use a virtual assistant and combine it with a system like this, one of the advantages of having a, a virtual assistant with a, with a really smart platform like this is when you're, because you guys are able to send the, create the lead record with where it came from, right? Well, realtor.org or Zillow, wherever it came from, what kind of marketing asset or campaign was the thing that triggered it? All that scripting and the response tree is already all there. So a virtual assist, or what our clients have happen, what, what our clients do is just have the virtual assistant respond to those leads and be able to know exactly where they came from, know what to say, know what, know how to pre-qualify them, and warm them up and cue them up and get them prepared for the buyer or the seller's agent they're going to talk to. Um, the other thing that, that how virtual assistants are used is uh, to confirm appointments, right? So if you set, if a virtual assistant, oftentimes a good virtual assistant can set an appointment right there on the phone uh, if, they're, if they're able to connect with the lead. Um, we, that happens all the time. 
and um, you know, if the appointment is set, the virtual assistant is going to do the confirmation process, right? They're going to follow up with that, uh, or they're going to reschedule that. Um, the other thing too is there's response time, and this is critical, and you probably can speak to a lot of this as well. There's the response time for that initial contact, which is so absolutely critical. You know better than I do, having been a really successful agent, you know better than I do that how critical that response time is to a new lead, right? Uh, but even no matter how fast you are, we found that, and you probably can speak to this with some actual data, no matter how fast or no, no matter how fast your response time is to leads, you're still not going to get to 100% of the leads. You're not going to get 100% yeah, of leads on the phone, right? Or to respond, no matter how fast you respond. It's like yeah. they were there and then they're gone. It's like, where'd you go? You, I'm responding to you in two minutes. You did not go anywhere, right? <laughs> but still doesn't get through. Um, and so what happens there is when you run in that gap, and that's a significant, that can be a significant percentage for, you know, for if you look at it as just across all your marketing platforms. Um, the virtual assistant, where they're utilized, is in the consistency of being able to follow up two, three, four times, same day, same hour, right? Absolutely. Whereas a real estate agent might be a little bit busier. Or you, you, I mean, you want your good agents on appointments, right? You want them face-to-face -face with the client, right? Building that relationship either on a listing appointment if you're a seller agent, you know, if you're a listing partner, or dealing, working with the buyers if you're a buyer's agent. But if they're doing that, they can't follow up with that lead. And so where we're a lot of our clients win with virtual assistance in the context of lead response systems is, yeah, agents can oftentimes take the first call quickly. And even that doesn't actually happen very consistently over a period of time because of appointments and things that come up. So a VA is always a backup or sometimes it's the front line. Um, and I have case studies where we can talk about this. Um, but the secondary way that virtual assistants are used where it actually helps you to maximize a lot of that potential ROI is, okay, they didn't pick up the phone in the first three minutes or five minutes. We're going to contact them three times the next three hours, right? Uh, and I love how you can send them a message. One of the things that our clients do with automated text messages from a platform is sending a text saying, hey, uh, my assistant, Susan, is going to call you in the next 10 minutes. We found that that one text prepping somebody for a phone call to expect a phone call uh, has caused uh, the, uh, the, 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 the response rate of like actually the client picking up the phone to go to actually be much better and much higher. So that's something else we're able to do. A virtual assistant is able to do that eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, depending on what schedule you have them, right? Because that's their only job. Or maybe they're a marketing assistant as well. But then anytime a lead comes in, they immediately switch that task. Real estate agents don't always have that luxury, right? Whether you're the team agent or whether you own the team or whether you're an agent on the team, like again, back to your deal. If you're working with clients, you can't just pick up your phone and start dealing with another lead, right? Um, so what, what virtual assistants enable a team to do is have like full consistency at all, almost at all times in response time and then follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up first day for 72 hours to really get them in. And I'm not even, we're not even talking yet about the people who need to be nurtured and incubated over three, six, nine months. Virtual assistants, again, there. If you set a task in a CRM, and actually, I know you guys are really good at setting tasks, recording calls. You guys have an amazing feature where you record all calls. You can set tasks. If I own a real estate team, for, the, for our clients that own, that have real estate teams, um, the virtual assistants are oftentimes the ones used for the follow-up to incubate more than even their in-house agents just because it's more predictable, it's more reliable, and it's more manageable. Absolutely. So kind of on that point, you might have to jump into some of that no, like, longer-term follow-up. That was, kind of, that was the end of my, mon my long monologue there. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, I think that's so – no matter what you're using, if you're using an agent or using staff or you're using uh, outsource a virtual assistant um, to facilitate that longer-term follow-up, so – after that first contact, how are you doing the three contacts that day? How are you doing the contact on day two, the email, the, all those things are going to happen. So what we do, and this can be done in a lot of different systems, is you run a campaign. So the campaign can automatically start. So if we jump back to kind of like the lead distribution, we can say right away start 10 days of pain with email campaign or my Facebook uh, Ellsbury property because this is a Facebook campaign I was running. Um, so in this campaign, if we jump into this really quick, we're saying right away, it's going to create a task that's due right away. Um, and there's another task because you have multiple things you do on day one. An email is going to go out on that first day. Um, again, it can be a video email. It can be text, anything you want, bomb bomb emails. And then it's going to wait a day. It's going to create more tasks. So this is saying to 
your staff member, virtual assistant, everything they need to do every single day. Because when you have 37 leads or 3,000 leads all at different stages with long-term follow-up, short-term, new leads, nobody remembers what to do with every lead every single day. So this allows all these things automatically fire on every single lead. Then they can just go in and look at their dashboard every single day and say, hey, what tasks are due today? What are due overdue and what's coming up in the future? So it's very easy to go through and just do what you need to. But from a, an administration, the best practice from a team leader, having these set up and having them automatically fire is the key to using kind of for us as accountability page. So this is something that uh, I know our clients use virtual assistants to even manage this page. This is a page that uh, best practice, you look at it every single day. If you look at it for two minutes, a team leader comes in when they're using the system and they look at this. What they're looking for is which agents have overdue tasks. And a lot of virtual assistants will come in and just do all these overdue tasks or help with those things or trying to help do like a weekly report card on the agents and say, what's the status of the different agents? Who has tasks overdue? Who has leads that are still new? I mean, when you change a lead to unknown once you've contacted it or tried to contact, you don't know if it's hot or cold or anything yet, there shouldn't be any leads that are still new. How many leads? I mean, Steven has seven leads he's never even viewed. Now, this is a dummy account. so. Um, but there should, they should have viewed all their leads. I mean, these are things that they need to step into. How many don't have any future tasks to follow up with? These are all the issues that can come up and using a virtual system to make sure that all these things are happening. You set up the campaigns, those fired right away, and who's not doing those activities, or the virtual system jumping in and actually doing these activities for the agents, making the phone calls, sending the uh, emails if they're not automatic or whatever that is. And then the other piece is if they're making calls, um, using a virtual assistant or using somebody on staff, usually the person that knows what the script should be, going through and especially in our system, clicking on the calls, listening to some of the calls and saying, hey, are they using the script that we said they should use? Um, so going through and just auditing and just doing spot checking to make sure everything's happening the way that it should be. Also, if you're using a virtual assistant, this is a way that if you want to listen to those calls, uh, so if the virtual assistant sets an appointment, you have a question on it, you don't have to go back and forth in communication, you just listen to it uh, right there on the spot. But kind of the best practice here is one, having the campaigns that are automatically starting when a lead comes in. So everybody knows what you're supposed to do on different days. And then somebody watching this accountability page to make sure that people aren't falling behind on what they're supposed to be doing. And if they are, they're leveraged from somewhere else in the company or those leads are going to somebody that can work them today because those leads got to the right person, but if they're not being followed up with long-term, what was the point? I mean, they need to be followed up with long-term to generate business. 100% spot on, yeah. You know, I just, I'll, it, it's just so interesting. Every time I see the inside of PowerPoint, I still, even though I've seen it so many times, I still just kind of like get this re re refreshing feeling, uh, this re this remark in my own mind about like, man, they really, they're really doing a good job of providing what the agent needs just with that automated track and reporting. So kudos to you guys for doing that. Um, yeah, one thing, I, I don't remember exactly where the stat comes from, but about 85% of your revenue as an agent is representing the 90 day plus mark on any leads yeah, coming in. Absolutely. Right. It's in the 90 days plus to like the nine months, 12 months category. And that's just on new lead inbound leads. I'm not even talking about repeat and referral. Yeah. And so 85%, according to my, my understanding is the majority of your revenue. And uh, so the majority of your revenue is the long-term follow-up, but uh, any of your short-term revenue is also in your immediate follow-up. So I guess what I'm trying to say is one of the things, and I'd love to hear you say what your perspective is on my statement, but one of the key differentiators that I see in the, in, in the businesses of mid six figure and growing and then seven figure and eight figure agents is that the lead response process is truly systematized, consistent, and very aggressive and very fast. It's, it's highly accountable. It's completely system, systematized and it's and it's really planned out. And to in, in in fact, I don't I don't know of a single seven figure agent who's a client here on my out desk whose business who whose business I've seen that doesn't have that in place. Yeah, I would completely agree. I think it's that kind of what you said. It's planned, so they have a plan. It's consistent or transparent and it's accountable that if yep. you don't have it in a place that and I just go back to that old adage of you could say make 17 calls and the CRM could say you made 17 calls but if you can't listen to them or prove they happened or listen to them to coach people through like all those steps have to be consistent 
and transparent and accountable. And somebody that builds a system but doesn't have the accountability to hold people accountable to it, it's going to fall apart and they're not going to know until it's too late. And I, I think with that, people will split hairs. And I know it's money, so saying splitting hairs is nothing with the respect that it actually needs, but people will split hairs over spending a couple hundred dollars a month on something to track and manage everything where they'll spend thousands of dollars generating leads and thousands of dollars on staff and they're missing closing so you don't have the system there to protect and actually ensure that investment does the best that it can. Because going from a 4% to a 5% conversion rate made them an extra $30,000 a year but they didn't want to spend a couple hundred dollars to make sure that happened. And so it's kind of make sure the priorities are the right place to make sure those conversions are happening and they're consistent. Got it. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Well, um, I feel like this might be a good place to wrap up part one since we wanted to keep these bite-sized bite and focused. Do you feel like we've covered everything, or is there anything else you want to make sure that we cover in today's session? Yeah, I think maybe just the, the last piece would be that idea of accountability, that if you're, yes. as a team leader, if you're running your business and anything we said kind of like strikes a nerve from the leveraging virtual assistants to do these tasks for you or from the standpoint of using the system or giving leads to the wrong people, I feel like those are all things that, you might be, if that struck a nerve, you might be held hostage by some of your team members that if you're not holding them accountable to, like I said, made these, make these 17 calls and they only made three and they're just saying no big deal, like that's on you. You're their sales manager. You have to put this stuff in place. You have to hold it accountable because it's your return at the end of the day. Um, just being, I've seen a lot of people put stuff in place, but they're not willing to hold their agents accountable with it, that all the tools in the world aren't going to do anything unless you're leading your team and making sure people are using what you put in place. I couldn't agree with that more. Couldn't agree with that more. And one thing I want to add to that too is how like that happening effectively or ineffectively today won't make your business or won't break your business, right? The difference between somebody making three calls today or 17 calls today, it won't it's not going to you know, leave you homeless and broke today and it's not going to make you a millionaire today. But if you keep having that kind of in if in effectiveness in your business uh, or if you don't have an, an, an a way to drive the accountability if that keeps happening today and tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after and you keep spending the thousands and thousands of dollars that Chris just talked about on leads right in marketing services and investing and in getting exposure and you keep building up all this potential and it's coming in and it's not being followed up with properly, and it's not being converted properly, and there's no accountability around that process, give it three months, six months, nine months. And I would dare say this is one of the reasons why we have such a high failure rate in this industry, right? Yeah, it's because absolutely. there's just no accountability. It's actually not that hard to go out and buy leads, right? You just write a check and you buy some leads. Now you have to kind of distill between the better services, but still, like there's leads out there to be bought. Um, you can prospect, you can do a lot of things to generate the potential. But what Chris is talking about right there with the accountability, that piece right there and keeping people on your team accountable to the metrics or to the key activities you're supposed to be doing every single dang day, even if it won't make or break your business that day, you stack up enough of those over time and it's either going to break your business or it will make your business. So yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't echo the importance of that more, more so. Awesome. Um, and then anybody that, if you have any interest, uh, again, this is the purpose of this webinar is not to, to sell anything. It's really just to bring value that you can see what best practices large teams and growing teams are using and implement those now. If you do have any interest in looking at FirePoint, if you go to firepoint.net, make sure to use the code MOD for my out desk. That will waive the setup fee. Um, for anybody that does sign up through that, so if there's any interest there, again, firepoint.net, and use the promo code MOD for my out desk. Awesome, and I appreciate that. Um, and then also for us guys, uh, you can email me personally to Andre, A-N-D-R-E-Y, at myoutdesk.com. Again, that's A-N-D-R-E-Y, at myoutdesk.com. Uh, if you have interest in learning more about what we do and how we provide help, uh, and that's all I'll say um, there. Um, and then we'll help, we'll actually give you guys a discount as well off our setup fee that we normally have for hiring a full-time virtual assistant. Again, if you want to learn our process and some of our best practices, you can get in touch with us that way or simply just go to myoutdesk.com, check out our blog, you can get on our live chat, you can contact us that way as well. Um, we actually had one question come in, uh, uh, Chris. Um, 
actually a couple of questions have come in. So before we get off, let's answer those questions. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, Greg asks, Chris, does your software integrate with dot loop? Um, so today it does not. Uh, we have a dot loop integration in the works, but do, we do not have a direct integration with dot loop today. We have a lot of people that run their transactions in our system through those campaigns and that entire process, but not a direct integration with dot loop that's live today. Got it. Um, and then Matt, Matt, Matt Wilhide asks, what is the best virtual assistant recommendation for a new team that is already using FirePoint? As far as uh, what position to use? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Matt, um, can you clarify if you're talking about what position to use them for within your team or what company or resource to use to find a virtual assistant? Would you mind clarifying, please? And while you're clarifying, I'm going to go and ask Kelly, I'm going to ask, answer Kelly's question. She asked, do you have a part-time VA available? And the answer to that is no, Kelly. We've actually found that um, hiring a part-time virtual assistant, especially as your first VA hire, um, statistically speaking, in the last 10 years provides the least amount of value to agents because they're part-time. They're not putting enough in enough time for you to actually systematize them into your entire business we found that full-time hires work the best, regardless of what category you hire them for, administrative, transaction coordinator, marketing, ISA, whatever it is, you want full-time, you want them integrated into your business, you want them taking things off your plate, and you want them implementing your systems like a FirePoint, like the follow-up process. You want them in your business full-time. So, um, so that's, that's it. Can, that. From being in the business, I guess one thing I would say is I've used virtual assistants, and the uh, probably two biggest things for my personal opinion of using VAs in real estate is one, use them for what your strengths aren't, but that what you're willing to hold accountable. And so if you're really good at converting leads, but you're really bad at long-term follow-up, then use them for the long-term follow-up. If you're mm -hmm. really struggling with transaction management, use them for that. But only if you're willing to hold them accountable, they are part of your team. You can't just hire somebody and just plug them in and hope they're going to do everything you want. And then kind of second point falls into that. They're part of your team. So anybody that works for you, you touch base with every day for five minutes. You say hi. You see what's going on. You go through process with them. You go through their one-on-one -on -one once a week, like just normal business practices that they work with you. They work for you. You can't just say, oh, just do all this stuff. And then three weeks later, you look and it's not all done or it's not done the way you wanted it to. Um, you have to integrate them as part of your staff. I love that. Yep. And again, that's from somebody who's actually built a real estate business. Uh, so to Matt Wilhite's clarification, the, he's one who originally asked, what is the best virtual assistant recommendation for a new team that is already using FirePoint? His clarification was company or resource. So Chris, what company or resource should Matt look at of a, of a, when he, if he's considering a virtual assistant? I say, call my out desk. Uh, I'm on a webinar with my out desk. Uh, that's pretty much a no brainer there. Um, I think if I was asked what system to use, I'm going to tell you to use FirePoint. Um, at the end of the day, I understand there's even other systems out there, uh, but the reality is we believe in what we sell. Um, and Andre, my out desk, believes in what my out desk sells in success, and we have a lot of clients that are in common. Victoria asks Do you syndicate with Follow Up Boss? Um, as far as syndicate, so we're not a syndication service. Usually syndication is the idea of a listing coming in and being pushed out to other websites, but we can send, we can accept leads from Follow Up Boss, and then we could send leads into Follow Up Boss, but we don't send it. Um, so if it's like as far as leads, usually people want to use FirePoint to manage their business though, and so if they have leads in Follow Up Boss, they would just pull all those leads over and then manage their business from FirePoint. Got it. Okay. Uh, Richard M Macos, Machos asks, what is the discount code? So can you give him the discount code again, Chris? Yes, it is M-O-D, uh, Mary Orange David, which is probably not the right way to say that, but just M-O-D. Yeah, which is short for my out desk, MOD. So M-O-D, MOD. Um, and, and, and the FirePoint has generously offered to waive the setup fee of $300 for anybody from the, from the my out desk community. Uh, Kelly asks, are the VAs licensed and can they make phone calls to my clients? They, didn't, they do not come to you licensed. You certainly can get them licensed if you like. The one thing there I'll say is that they won't end up being a competition. You won't end up being training a competition who then as soon as they're good at doing what they, we want them to do, they suddenly take their license and they go and start competing against you because they see the money they can make. Um, so you won't run into that. Um, and can they call clients? Um, most of our clients who have an ISA VA. Now we have different ca categories of virtual assistants, but those who have an ISA, and we have a lot of teams with multiple virtual assistants, um, 
have the VA call clients, do database prospecting, and actually even do do outbound prospecting, like expired FISBOs, circle prospecting, and, and the like. So yes, they can call. Um, and Matt says, thank you for the answer. Richard says, thank you for the answer. Um, Deanna, Deanna asks, do you need email parsing to work with a contract ISA or VA? If so, is FivePoint able to provide this? So you probably shouldn't need email parsing to work with the VA. Usually a VA is going to come in, is going to work through your system. They're part of your staff. And so they're actually logging into your system. They're sending emails and making calls directly from your system. So they're not working with an outside system. They would actually log in, make calls. So if you're using like the communication with FirePoint, those calls are made through FirePoint so you can listen to them inside FirePoint for quality control. Um. Great answer. I hope that answers the question, Dan. And let us know if you have any follow-up questions. Uh, Victoria actually has a great que uh, has a statement here that could be a great question. I'd like you to speak to it just because you have the experience of building such a high-performance business so fast. Um, she goes, "This is where I am. This is where I am in the process. Is finding the glue to keep everything together, seeking best option." Can you talk a little bit to agents today just about what it what, what does it take to build the glue to keep it together, especially for somebody like you who ramped it from zero to over 400 deals in four years? Yeah, I think the glue is different for different people. I think that could okay. be, oh my gosh, that could be a whole webinar just in that. Um, I think the glue for some people is personality. It's holding the culture together. And then the glue for other people is systems. And when I say the glue, it's usually the glue that we're lacking. Um, like I'm really great at systems. I just have to focus more on personality, like with the people that I work with. Um, so some people, they really need to focus on the systems. And it's kind of, I would say, it goes from the question of what keeps you up at night? That if you wake up at 2 in the morning, if you're stressed, is that stress around I can't answer these questions or I don't know if uh, person A is doing A, B, and C? That's a system. If you're, what's keeping you up at night is these agents keep leaving, then it might be personality or structure or compensation. And so I think it really stems from what is, what's keeping you up late at night, and then that kind of says, here's the glue and here's how to leverage it. For most people, it's systems because it's a peace of mind and transparency. But for some people, it's just the, it's the culture, it's the compensation, it's how they put their business together that it's still fragile. Great answer. Yeah. And to the systems part, what I would add, what I would say to echo exactly what Chris is saying, uh, Victoria is, and everybody else who's listening, um, if you're ever dealing with that uneasy feeling in the pit of your stomach, like you don't know what's going on or you should be doing something even when you're not working, if you know that you've truly got a reliable system in place that's happening in an automated and delegated way, whether that's a combination, whether that's purely technology or a combination of technology and human, like with the, possibly with the virtual assistant, and you end up seeing it work one week, two weeks, one month, two months, three months, and you start seeing it working, you know that it's working, um, that, that can give you an incredible peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that doesn't mean you don't ever have to stop providing accountability, right, or driving accountability. That never stops. That Always, never yeah. goes away. Even if you hire a team leader or somebody to be the manager, you got to then keep the manager accountable. The accountability piece never stops. But the peace of mind knowing that it's not dependent completely on you as a choke point, that goes away. Absolutely. Uh, well, it looks like the questions have died out. So with that, um, again, yeah, guys, go to firepoint.net, right? And you can use the discount code MOD to get the setup fee waived if you're interested in getting in contact with Firepoint and learning even more, getting a demo with them and learning even more all of what they do. Um, and the cool thing about getting a demo with Firepoint is that they're going to take you guys through a true demo, a no-pressure demo, where they're going to take you through the software product one-on-one, -on -one, I believe, right, Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's individual. Yeah. And they're going to be able to actually relate it to what your individual unique problems are and also be able to relate it to what your unique circumstances and goals are. Um, so just from that perspective, I know that this, uh, it's a valuable phone call that they provide. I know it's a demo, but it's not a trap. It's a valuable phone call. So uh, go and avail yourself of that. And again, if you're interested in learning more about a virtual assistant in my out desk, contact us. You can email me directly or just contact us off our website and then let us know that you came from the FirePoint and the MyOutDesk webinar series, and we'll get, get you taken care of there as well. Uh, with that, uh, I'll say thanks for hanging out with us. Anything else from your side, Chris? No, just thanks, everybody, and we'll see you on the next time. Perfect. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.